Okay, so first day back in the classroom. All right, so what are you doing the first day? First day is usually built to mainly meetings. Uh, after you do a few meetings and you go over uh, handbook and all that other stuff, uh, you then you get some time in the classroom. So for me, I get to go through and reorganize everything from last year to this year. So uh, about to get started on that. Got to take off some of the uh, old butcher paper, figure out where I'm going to put some stuff, and uh, get Bob set up for a new painting thing. So one other thing last year is uh, the end of the year there was some old AV equipment that I had uh, kind of sent over and so I got to go through this next. It's going to be like the first big thing that I'm going to have to tackle. Going through cables and figuring out if there's anything that's usable. Maybe getting use them for a couple wire projects. I got a bunch of cardboard here too so then we can use that for uh, cardboard sculpture pieces and then my pallets. Uh, those I've got to start collecting a few more of because what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to take the pallets, uh, strip them apart. I got a um, an all saw, cut them in half, cut them down to pieces, use the wood in chunks. Got to build a wedging table for my ceramics class. So wedging table is where you uh, you got plaster down so you can put the wet clay on there. You can wedge it up for uh, the wheel throwing. So I got my three wheels that the students are going to be using but they need some that that wedging table for so that we have a uh, so we have an easier time to make and use the clay products okay so today we are on location we're out of the, our, the main building today we are at uh, School of the Arts uh, just to do like a uh, in-service overview what we're gonna be doing this year that kind of thing so let's head on in Almost forgot my coffee. That would be really bad. Uh oh. All right, gotta go. So, out of one meeting, off to another one. So much meetings. That's the that's like the worst part of a of the first week back at school. First week back at school is nothing but meetings. Yesterday, um, the vlog is going to be very very short. Uh, more than usual just because of the meetings that I had going on uh, I think I recorded maybe a minute maybe uh, so uh, I'm gonna try and work on making sure that the videos are way better and that I can do more stuff and do more trying to get everything in on every single day uh, keep you guys posted on that cool okay another big thing um, that I hate about the first week back is how hot it is and, and you have to wake up early Wake up early sucks, man. Oh. All right, got my water. Okay, so today's vlog is gonna be basically, um, I gotta start working on my room. I have this big cart, that table worth of stuff, and that table way back there in the back of a whole bunch of boxes, whole bunch of boxes back there. Also, if I get a minute, I, I can work on the uh, bookshelf of death, trying to do that too. Let's see how fast I can get stuff done. Okay, end of another day, uh, just wrapping up the last couple things. Got an email, we have a new lesson plan template. All right, so what's that mean? All right, so most people, most new teachers and teachers in general um, kind of have some sort of lesson plans that they've used in the past or in college that this is how you think a lesson plan should go. And then all of a sudden you have a new lesson plan email that says you have to do it this way across the board. Everybody's doing this. So are you. We get these emails and I'm looking it over now and, and I see there's a lot of great benefits to it. And then there's a lot of things I'm like, this doesn't apply to me. And that's kind of my issue with, with lesson plans, I think, in general, because you get a lesson plan, you have this piece of, you have this Word document that is great for two-thirds, three-quarters, five-eighths of the, of the people who are using it. But what about, like, me? I'm an art teacher where, what am I doing that day on a lesson plan? doesn't really fit to what I'm working on because if I was in a math class, if I'm in a science class, a history class, a language arts class, an English class, they do something every single day that is specific to what they're trying to teach. So every single day they have to put down something new, something fresh, and I get that. For me, I'm teaching one concept that could be two weeks long and every single day I'm doing the same exact thing. Uh, students are progressing along their project further along, but I'm still having to retouch on basic do this, do this, do this process. And doing it daily kind of defeats any purpose of a lesson plan for me at all because every single day it's just exactly the same thing. And if I'm putting it in there, it's just a waste of space of 
paper, resources, time, effort, everything. I don't know. It's just weird. All right, I'm gonna go home, crash, because first week back, I'm like dead. Uh, still coming off of the summer sleep schedule. Morning. So, another day, pre-planning, which is nice because then I get wear my RoboCop t-shirt. I like this t-shirt a lot. Um, big, fan, big fan of Loot Crate. Um, I'll try and put a link down in my subscription for my, uh, my code, uh, uh, not promotional, uh, at all, but, um, I do, I do, I'm a big fan of Luke, I think they do some really cool stuff. Um, so today, gotta do, finish setting up the room, new lesson plans, get stuff printed off, uh, syllabuses, the opening activity that we do, uh, which I also do is kind of like a survey so I can do my students and figure out where they're at, what they like, what they don't like, uh, because then I can kind of facilitate or kind of gauge my projects towards that kind of like dislike thing. Uh, and being and giving yourself, giving your students a survey kind of at the beginning of the class and going and actually taking a minute to read through them. Most of the stuff is like basic stats, so like. Uh, contact phone number if you need to contact somebody, uh, what's your schedule so that if you need to find them something comes up you, so you have some basic information on that student. Uh, but then having a survey of like what they don't, what they like, what they don't like, um, what their interests are, that can help you uh, try and facilitate and find stuff that they get into, that they're into, and it, and it makes for more uh, useful conversation for one, more student driven interest in what they're trying to make, what's that product, or what's that uh, lesson that you're trying to teach them, how, what, what, you're, what you're in with the student. Um, usually if you find like a mass similarity between them, uh, let's say, um, like a good question on a survey would be, what's your favorite movie? Um, what type of music are you guys into? Um, now a lot of these things are gonna be fad based, you gotta go in with that knowledge ahead of time, but if you can kind of have like a, like a blanket of likes and dislikes, then you have something that you can gauge more on directly of what they like and what they don't like and that gives you more of that in as to how to engage with that student uh, socially to where you can take that social interest and turn it then into a uh, learning pathway for them. So, a little helpful tip. Should probably go do something else now. We have a problem, Houston. Okay, so remember how the other day I said that lesson plans, we're getting a new lesson plan template, we're gonna get a, have to have to do a new design, and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. This was also bad. If you open it back up, and you just did an edit, and you're about to print, about to save, and all, and all of a sudden, um, you saved the wrong one. I need, I need Microsoft to come up with a way to, I accidentally saved the wrong one, how do I go back to the previous one? Because, any, anything I've ever seen, you can't do that. That's a problem because I have some really good stuff written. You know when you're when you're typing and you're like, oh, I, I, th I feel like I'm Shakespeare right now. I've come up with like this really nice, oh, differentiated instruction or manipulative or something, and you're like, oh, this is gold. And then you and then it's gone. And am like, what? <sighs> okay, I think it's about lunchtime for me. Get a little. Okay, so I'm at this point now where we gotta get clay kind of set up and ready for the year ish. All right, so what I've done already is we've got a number of five gallon buckets I've already got. I got my pug mill, I got my wet bot, my wet containers where we got wet clay re soaking, reconstituting in this area. Then switch over to this area where we have our dry, um, our drying racks. We have plaster baths, we've got wet clay on so we can dry it out. So we can come back on this side, put it back in the pug mill. Pug mill, uh, cut it out to some some new clay, ship it out to some uh, schools that are needing clay, uh, those that have sent me clay that, that, that have dried out so we can make some new stuff, and I gotta prep some buckets for more buckets, more clay, lots of stuff. Now, here's the problem. I'm running out of room in my storage. So I had, at the end of last year, a bunch of clay stocked up on the side. So now I gotta move this myself out here so it's easier for the students to get access to so that nobody's got to go back into the room trip anything like that so i have a cleaner shot so i'm going to see how uh, how much i can move before i pass out
Moved a bunch of boxes of clay. Uh, each one of those is 50, 50 pounds per box. 20 boxes. So a thousand pounds. Eat that Fitbit. Oh, also I wanted to give a big shout out and thank you to uh, Mr. Dave Grohl of Foo Fighters and Foo Fighters in general uh, because I just had your playlist on while I was moving stuff. Good workout music. Oh, I need to go sit down. Okay, so here's where we're at today. I've almost got everything done. I think about everything. I, I actually have no idea whether I've got everything done or not. Uh, surveys for students for the first day so that they know what they're, uh, so I know about them, so I understand them a little bit. Uh, syllabuses and many release forms for the upcoming video tutorials that we're going to be doing where we're, um, I'm going to have a discussion between myself and a student over their work so we can actively engage in conversation on critiquing and why they made this piece, what's interesting about it to them, and, um, and yep, that's, that's, that's the stuff. All right, so just cutting up these last surveys here. <sighs> this is what I hate about coming back. Um, you're on summer break, you get back, we're trying to get everything back into a flow of what you, how everything was set up, how it used to be for your class. Um, and you totally forget what you what your routine was because you're out of the building for two months. You're just completely shut down. If you're if you're lucky, if you're if you're really good with this, um, and you can detox over the summer. That's like the best thing you can do, in my opinion, is to, is completely detox from school over the summer. It's the best thing. However, it means when you come back, you have to remember. Oh, I have to do this job thing all over again. And that becomes hard. So maybe maybe at some point I'll start a checklist. Okay, so most of the room is done at this point. Um, just got a couple things, which is mainly like, where am I gonna put them and put them away and whatnot? Like this big crate behind me. Now, I know it's gotta go somewhere. I'm just un unsure of exactly where I'm gonna put it or my back cabinet back here. And it basically came to today when I was just moving stuff off the desk. The third row shelf just became the crap collector. Crap collector. So I gotta figure something out with that one. Uh, but this year I've come up with a new solution. So last year I sat in the front of the room at the front at the front corner table over here uh, to do my own work. And nice as it is to work at the same table as the students, I do need my own table because I start taking over like the entire table, like the whole big table. That becomes a problem. So, so this time, rather than taking over that whole table, I did consolidate myself to one uh, single table that I can have as myself, which is nice because it stays in my zone over here. So I have my desk area, my, my whiteboard that I work off of, um, and then the student whiteboard and the Promethean board that we use as a communal space. Uh, but this board I, I use, um, I don't know if it was in earlier in the video, but I use it to uh, put down my notes and things that I'm thinking about projects and kind of have an out, as an outline board so the students can see this is where we're going, uh, but also so I have a visual of what, what are we going to be doing um, because otherwise you get discombobulated and everything. Uh, the other thing I did this year was I moved this desk farther out and away. So I actually pushed it out uh, more into in front of the board so it was just it works better. Um, and also I moved my slab roller uh, out more into the middle of the space. Yes, it kind of butts up to where I'm working, but um, the nice thing is when, with having it over here rather than back here, I've got, I don't have to contest with the door and once the carts are moved over, it's much more space around it, which gives the, the students a lot more access. And also I've got a rolling cart that's basically my stuff on wheels that I can kind of move around. If I need to work on a project with a student, help the student out, I can just wheel that over to them and it makes it a lot easier. Um, back library, so that we got all of our library of art, knowledge, and books. Uh, roll cart for to use for clay, so students can store their clay stuff. Uh, and moved out a thousand pounds of dry clay to be reconstituted into some new clay via the bat system. So I need to make some more bats so we can start working on two areas that we can load up with two, one area over here to wet, to wet down the clay and then keeping fresh clay on the bottom because it's super heavy. 
Um, and then just kind of, oh, and then the last thing I do is over the next two weeks is kind of my goal is about two weeks to kind of get enough pallets to take care of this. I'm going to build a wedging table uh, for ceramics class, which should then go over here and be built out of all my pallets. I just have to find a couple more pallets that have some wider um, center rib sections. These pits right here, um, it's just a block. I need like a whole big one by or four by four pillar so that I can make sure these things, this thing is nice and strong. I've uh, got some plastic that I've scavenged out underneath the table over there to put into the well, pour in plaster on top, make it a nice flat top so the kids can then wedge their clay, take it up to the pottery wheels up front, but I have a nice clean setup. All right, so for any high school teachers that are thinking about getting into ceramics, those are some basic things to be thinking about. How are you going to recycle clay? Are the students going to be wedging the clay in the classroom? If so, where, how, what are you going to do? Um, oh, and then I got my wood boards over here so the kids can work on wood boards on top of the table because the masonite tables that we have, the clay sticks to them, so you want to make sure it's a non, uh, so it's more porous surface so that the clay, once it sits down, uh, if it sits on a non-porous surface, there's no air getting in between there so it like gets welded to the table and I gotta get my spatula out and scrape it. And sh so got the wood bats to, or the wood boards to work off of. The bat box is up by the, up by the wheels. I got a bat, a box of bats to be put onto the wheel head so the kids can, uh, while they're working, take a bat off, work, work on, take that piece off, work on another piece or another bat on. Nice flowing system so everything works works good. The other class that I'm doing this term is surface design. I've been doing curriculum for eight years. Uh, one more is not going to kill me. It's just something else that I got to do. And, I, and nice thing is because it has to be done and I know I'm going to be the one doing it and I'm the one teaching it, might as well do what I want to do, which is kind of par for the course. But you know, anytime that you see these kinds of uh, things come out on an email from a county, from a superintendent, administrator, anybody says, hey, we need somebody to help out with this do it. It's, it's not hard. It takes some time. Um, and a few brain cells, but it's not hard. And it, at the end of the day, you have more, um, more weight to your voice when you said, this is what we need to do and why we need to do it. Uh, which I'm always all for supporting like, Hey, throw yourself into the lions, then battle, battle out those, fight those battles and see what comes out. So we'll pick up tomorrow and figure out what else we have to get done for before the students come in and the year begins because the students are coming. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Hey class, I hope that you liked that last video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down there at the bottom. Now I'm gonna get back to uh, doing my thing, which is uh, work on my own stuff. So uh, don't forget to follow me on the web. I got a bunch of places you can find me, such as Pinterest, or no, not, not, we're not doing Tumblr. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Group Me, that's a new one for me, and Steam, uh, and my personal favorite, YouTube. Check me out, like and subscribe, see you guys later, next class. Follow, see you later, next class, do your homework. <laughs>